I initially transformed my body eight years ago, and this is the physique I'm able to maintain. Now, I just have to give a quick disclaimer. If you're looking for a secret weight loss hack that's going to get you to lose 10 pounds in the next 10 days, this isn't it. But if you want to look and feel great, if you want to be healthy, if you want to focus on longevity and have good quality of life as you get older, this video is for you. These are also the exact same tips that I give to all my students and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. Number one, prioritize your health, specifically your metabolic health. If you look at all the changes that you're trying to make in terms of health, specifically improving your metabolic health, it's going to set you up for success so much better in the long run. Because where people usually tend to go wrong is they set goals and they make decisions purely based on looks, their aesthetic goals. Not that that's wrong, but that's usually when you start to see people fall for weight loss gimmicks and crash diets. They put themselves on these massive calorie deficits. They eat a lot of highly unprocessed, low calorie foods. I like to call them Franken foods all for the sake of fitting those foods in their macros. If you do that, it can get you results pretty fast. I'll give you that. And for, I don't know, three to six months, you'll look great. But if those changes are not optimal for your health because you're eating a lot of fake food and because your body is an adaptation machine, after a while, your body is gonna start fighting against you, usually in the form of hunger and a decrease in your metabolism. This is when you hit the dreaded weight loss plateau. And you're gonna start losing all those initial positive changes. And not only will you be sliding backwards, but it's also gonna make it so much harder to make progress. And you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle against your body that's rebelling against you. This is called yo-yo dieting. You are now in weight loss struggle city. But instead, if you follow on improving your metabolic health, the aesthetics will naturally follow. Like don't just look at the amount of calories on a given food just for the sake of fitting it in your macros. Plus, if it comes in any sort of packaging and it comes with that nutritional label sticker, it means that it's most likely been processed in some way, shape, or form. And the more processing your food goes through, the worse it is for you. Number two, slow and steady wins the race. Listen, Motivation is awesome, but you have to put that motivation in the right place because if you use it the wrong way, this is when you start seeing people go with that all or nothing attitude. They wanna do all the things all at once, but guess what? That's usually not sustainable. It's too big and too drastic of a change because here's the problem with motivation. You only have a finite amount of it, meaning it runs out eventually. This is why only 8% of people achieve their New Year's resolution, by the way. And usually they're off the wagon by February. As soon as your motivation fades, you're gonna be back to your old habits. You're gonna be back to square one. The only difference is you're gonna be more frustrated than ever. Sound familiar? Instead, if you start with small and simple changes, you focus on creating tiny habits and build them into your lifestyle as you progress. If you make them part of who you are, I mean on a cellular level, you can just keep building from there and eventually establish that healthy lifestyle that feels good for you. It becomes easy, it's seamless, and it gets you to your goals eventually. It's really all about going at a pace that you can maintain. Everyone's journey is gonna be different, but the common denominator is Adherence. Adherence is everything. Speaking of adherence, tip number three is find workouts you enjoy. Yes, I personally think that there is an optimal form of exercise to help you achieve your weight loss goals. I personally think that CrossFit is the best strength and conditioning workout program on the planet, but that's just me. If you hate CrossFit, you're not gonna do it. Whereas if you find a type of workout that you love, then you're gonna keep doing it. You can be consistent with it. And that's when you see real transformation happen. Consistency trumps any best workout program out there in terms of fat loss, body recomposition, and improving your overall health. The best thing you can do is some form of resistance training. But if you hate lifting weights, you're not gonna do it. Whereas if you like bar, for example, and I've seen people get great results from it, you're gonna see so much more progress by doing that because you're actually gonna do it consistently. Number four, aim for a complete lifestyle change, not just a temporary fix. You don't wanna look at weight loss and improving your health as just something that you do temporarily. You don't wanna just do it for a month. And this is why I'm always fascinated by people who do like Sober October or they go on a juice cleanse and then they just binge afterwards. Like what's the point of that? When you start your weight loss journey, remember that everything you do, all the positive changes you wanna make are things that you wanna be part 
of your lifestyle rather than something that you feel like you have to force yourself to do. For example, everyone seems to love pickles but I hate it. I don't care if it's the healthiest food on the planet. I don't like it. So I'm not going to eat it. Same thing with kale. Like I don't really see the hype. So I had to find other healthy alternatives that works for me. Some of my go-to healthy staples are cruciferous vegetables, pastured meat and eggs, nuts, and dark chocolate. I love them and I look forward to eating them every time. That is what's going to make those changes Stick because I like what I eat. But people are susceptible to quick fixes. We live in a world where instant gratification is the name of the game. That's when you start to see juice cleanses, detox teas, and crash diets. Or when people count points like Weight Watchers. Like, I don't really get that. Do you think our Paleolithic ancestors looked at food and said, geez, I wonder how many points this food has? No. Listen, none of those things are sustainable long term. They can't be part of a healthy lifestyle. So don't even do them. Plus, juice cleanses are really expensive. When I was doing my research for this video, I saw a six-day juice cleanse package for $239. Who in their right mind pays $239? for juice. I would spend that money buying real food instead. You're going to get a way better ROI from that. And looking at it from that perspective, I just want to circle back to my previous tip. This is why I want you to pick a workout program you enjoy doing. That way you look at working out as not something you have to do. It's just part of your life now. It's in your DNA. Because when you achieve that, then motivation isn't a factor anymore. It's part of your identity now. Like, do you have to think about brushing your teeth? No, it's just something that you do every day. Working out, same thing. Getting 10,000 steps every day, no problem. Eating whole foods, that's automatic. It's not something where you have to dig deep and find motivation to do it. It becomes so much easier when it's just part of your lifestyle. It's part of who you are as a human being. Number five, consistency is key. Those crash diets, juice cleanses, detox days aren't something you can do consistently. And again, they're ridiculously expensive. You're paying more for less. That's a bad deal. Listen, long-term sustainable results will never come from a one-week juice cleanse. Sustainable long-term change comes from consistently doing the right thing. Small daily good decisions done repeatedly, consistently, turns into staggering results over time. It's better to do less but be consistent with it than go all in for two weeks then you're back to your old habits afterwards. Let's use intermittent fasting for example. Person A does a 16-hour fast for a year and pairs it with a nutrient-dense whole foods diet. Person B does a 24-hour fast right away or does alternate day fasting or longer fasts and goes on a massive calorie deficit eating a lot of highly processed franken foods but can only sustain it for a month maybe if this person even gets there by the end of the year person a is gonna be night and day ahead of person b because person a was able to do a 16 hour fast and maintain his diet consistently by the way consistency only works if you're doing the right thing if you're doing the wrong thing i don't care how consistent you are you ain't getting results number six fast results aren't sustainable results. I mentioned this earlier, but your body is an adaptation machine. If you go all in to get fast results, your body is going to adapt to that very fast. If you eat less than a thousand calories every day, for example, you're going to see some pretty drastic results. But as soon as you stop doing that, because it's not sustainable and you're going to be hungry all the time, your body is going to readapt to your previous lifestyle. It's going to want to go back to your original body set weight. You're going to lose all your results from your crash diet when you go back to your previous lifestyle guaranteed. Because eating less than a thousand calories every day is not sustainable. You are literally starving yourself if you do that. But your body is really smart. It wants to survive. This is why when you go on a massive calorie deficit diet, your metabolism will slow down as a consequence and it'll break down your precious muscles for energy as a consequence. You don't want that. Which leads me to tip number seven. Be patient. I know it sucks to feel like you're doing all the right things for a week or two and not see results. You put in all that effort, you step on the scale, and you don't even see a difference. It sucks. But guess what? If you're consistent, again, assuming that you're doing the right thing consistently by focusing on improving your metabolic health, you will get results. It's just gonna take some time. And this, by the way, is a very important concept you need to be able to wrap your head around. Your rate of weight loss depends on how long you've been carrying the excess weight 
you're trying to lose. It depends how long you've been insulin resistant. It also depends on your genetic predisposition to storing body fat. Bio-individuality plays a huge role in this. This is why you should never compare yourself with anyone. It really only leads to one thing, disappointment. Number eight, there is no right way. There are many different diets you can try to get to the same end goal. Yes, certain diets may be more efficient than others. They might be more enjoyable than others. Like I personally think that a very low carb, moderate protein, high fat diet that's comprised of single ingredient, mostly in processed, nutrient dense foods is the best diet for weight loss, improving your metabolic health, and longevity because it's the best diet to moderate your insulin levels. Insulin is your master hormone. It's the hormone that controls your body weight. So it's important to keep it moderated at all times. But full transparency, you can also improve your metabolic health by following a vegetarian diet, albeit very hard to do and requires massive supplementation. You basically have to be perfect. You can also improve your metabolic health by following a paleo diet. I've seen people reverse their autoimmune disease by following a carnivore diet. What I'm trying to say here is there is no one path you have to take to get to where you want to be. You can carve your own path. For example, when I started my weight loss journey eight years ago, I just started fasting because I read somewhere that it's awesome, but I had no idea what I was doing when it comes to food. I just knew that I had to take a break from eating. Then I learned how to track my macros properly. Then I started really learning more about nutrition. And that's what led me to switching to a keto slash very low carb diet. Then I did a little bit more digging and I found out about how important quality is when it comes to your food. So I started eating organic vegetables as well as pastured animals and eggs. Over time, the path that is going to be best for you is going to change. Like what worked for you a year ago might not work for you this year. For example, if you went on a crash diet last year and it got you results, if you do it again this year and you barely see results this time, that's not uncommon because our bodies change, our lives change. A lot of different factors can go into what's going to be the most efficient and effective diet for you. So don't be frustrated and discouraged if you're doing something now and you're not getting the same results you did last time. It's most likely because things have changed and you need to change things up. You need to adapt. You need to pivot. It really only becomes a problem if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. That is the definition of insanity. Number nine, your goal for any diet is to achieve metabolic flexibility. This is the next step once you become metabolically healthy. Being metabolically efficient or keto adapted or fat adapted or being metabolically flexible, those are all interchangeable terms by the way, should be your number one priority when you're choosing the best diet that is right for you. Metabolic flexibility is a state where your body is easily tap into your fat stores and burn it for energy in between meals. It's a metabolic state where your body literally turns into a fat burning machine. And you achieve this by following a diet and following a compressed eating schedule, AKA intermittent fasting, where your body only has to produce a minimal amount of insulin. Again, it's the hormone that controls your body weight. You want to do your best to keep it moderated at all times in order to achieve metabolic flexibility. And my entire channel is basically dedicated towards getting you fat adapted. So make sure you check out all my other videos, especially if you're new. I'm also going to link to my programs at the top right hand corner here and in the description box. If you just want a step-by-step -step blueprint on how to become metabolically flexible. Number 10, make supportive lifestyle choices that promote metabolic flexibility. There are four different pillars of health and wellness. We've already talked about two of them so far, which is nutrition and exercise. The other two important factors are sleep and stress. And it's not about putting in 25% effort on your diet, 25% effort on exercise and so on. No, it's 100% commitment to your diet, 100% commitment to exercise and 100% commitment to getting quality sleep and managing your stress levels. If you miss out on one of them, you are going to be severely disappointed with your results or lack thereof. But I also understand that life happens. There are levels to this. Your goal should be 100% efficiency at all times. But if you can only get to 90%, that's okay. You need to be flexible and be able to roll with the punches. And I have separate videos that really dives into these two pillars, but I'm just going to give you the main points. You will find a grand total of zero research that connects lack of sleep to good health. It is so important to maintaining good health. Like none of this is going to work if you don't get at least seven hours of quality sleep 
in a pitch black room every night. When it comes to stress, the problem starts when it becomes chronic, when you're constantly stressed, because chronic stress leads to chronically high insulin levels, which then leads to chronic inflammation, which opens up Pandora's box to all sorts of disease, including diabetes, obesity, cancer, autoimmune, and cardiovascular disease, just to name a few. So if you're on point with your nutrition and exercise, and you're not seeing the results you're expecting, check in with your sleep quality and how you're managing your stress levels. I guarantee as soon as you fix those, you're winning. And if you follow all the tips I mentioned in this video, your life will change. You're welcome. Now, if you enjoy this video, then you don't want to ignore this one. And always remember, it's not about the weight you lose, it's about the life you gain. I'll see you in the next video.